This week 11 DFS picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Right now to honor football, MyBookie is offering up to $1,000 in free bets using the promo code SGP. That's right, $1,000 in bonus bets on your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paperhead providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free. All you got to do is head over to aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Oh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's up, Crame Dog? Well, I, I got to be honest. Uh, dealing with some uh, some sort of allergy, smoke related, maybe a mm. lot a lot of weird shit in the air out here in California. And oh, by the way, my sh- I, I didn't do the stats yet, but it has to be my shittiest weekend of the year. <laughs> I crushed it in college. Still missed the locks. Uh, I did not crush it in the NFL. Ryan, of course, I hit my lock. <laughs> That's why you call it a lock. Arizona plus four and a half. Never even had to sweat that thing out. And I also hit my lock in college and my bonus lock in college. I think I'm on like a six and zero run in locks and bonus locks in the college football podcast. Wow, Sean. Ryan, any chance that your poor performance was tied directly to you engaging in the Dion Waiters challenge where you <laughs> put your where you put your body to a, uh, a an insane amount of edibles? No, no. Uh, the the picks were made before the Dion Waiters challenge was accepted. Uh, it did in you know you I, did I, you did randomly take a uh, take a a nice long nap with a uh, with a blanket on. Yeah. It did remind me as a guy. I go in and I donate blood. <laughs> and uh, again, not that I'm a hero. Uh, the veterans are in, in honor of Veterans Day, but I go and donate blood and then you see the people that are donating platelets and they're completely because it's a way more intensive thing they're completely laid out like white face with a giant yeah. blanket on them and it kind of reminded me of ryan uh mid-afternoon but i also tough. i also took tough. a i took a nap and i was not involved in the Dion waiters challenge uh just a couple uh just drank a bunch of beers and ate some crappy food all right we are talking daily fantasy football and Recording this on Veterans Day with a veteran himself, Coast Guard veteran, Ooh. veteran of the Las Vegas professional gambling scene, Christian Pina. Pina, what's happening, man? What a transition, Sean. Happy <laughs> Veterans Day, my friend. Happy like I always said, people people didn't realize I had to beat you guys at DFS and, and kick Dick Olson's ass from the, the harbors of, of Boston and all the way to Newport and Cape Cod. I'm well traveled in the New England area, you know? <laughs> I'm just picturing a Coast Guard peanut. We need some sort of avatar for this, right? Yes. Yeah, maybe. Uh, a salute, salute to Pina. <laughs> hey, uh, this is the only boat trip music we have. So, can, can I just quickly make a comment about Veterans Day? Of course. Sure. Uh, we all, uh, we all like America. We all like the troops. I love the troops. But right. could the Fox pregame show be going any more over the top? And then trying to crowbar in a Gronkowski spike <laughs> from a military man, like come on, right? Like I, I flipped to NFL Network. They got so they got a guy with one leg doing pull-ups. It feels a little bit, it feels a little bit like a charitable thing that the leagues are doing to show everyone how much they love America. It is a, uh, it is a battle to see who loves the troops the most. Meanwhile, and- Colin Kaepernick still not on an NFL team. Right? <laughs> Meanwhile, you know who loves the troops the most. Sports Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, number one with the troops. In fact, I have an iTunes review in honor of Veterans Day. Uh, Real quick, we'll read this to kick things off and then get into our picks. Listening Every Day at Work by Veteran Bry. Uh, Listening to this fantastic podcast makes my blue-collar work less miserable at UPS. Love these guys. They give great weekly advice and insights on professional football. The college picks with Colby Dant are suspect. Yeah. He has this obsession with the Golden Hurricanes team. This team definite this team's definition by the modern uh, dictionary was described as peeing into a fan with his uh, <laughs> foreign girlfriend enjoying the wild urine shower exhausted under her face. I just cannot back teams with that sort of disgusting backing. I took minus seven and a half UCF live bet at my bookie.ag. Thank you guys for your service from an armory veteran, Brian from Boulder, Colorado. Brian, 
I'm sorry if you don't like plus 575 <laughs> money line dogs. I know that was a uh, th- yeah, you missed <coughs> out Brian. But hey, you may not have had Golden Hurricane live money line, but uh, we're happy to hook you up with some merch. Podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Always good to have some Veteran golden hur- always good to have some golden hurricane exposure in your life, right? Hey, plus 17 and a half. Didn't even have to think about that, but the uh, the live was uh, that was a sweet sweet cash. But again, we're talking daily fantasy on this podcast. We're we not are. talking about the college football. We'll we'll be hitting this, that later in the week. Before we get into the picks, mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag, they got the uh, the custom prop creator. I mean, if you went into the custom prop creator last night and threw in uh, threw in Kyle Rudolph two touchdowns, I think forty dollar bet paid over one thousand dollars. And my bookie.ag helped to uh, knock out the dreaded Dallas Cowboys. And it's great. It's a great place to lay down some of these player props because sometimes the line isn't set at what you think it would be. I mean, again, if you thought uh, Saquon Barkley was going to have a bad game, one rushing yard. So the adjusted line, tons of value there and uh, tons of fun over at mybookie.ag. Thanksgiving is just around the corner and uh, during Thanksgiving week, my bookie is offering up to up to a uh, $250 risk-free bet on the Bears and Lions game. That's right, up to $250 risk-free bet over at mybookie.ag, and that's for past, present, and future my bookie players. New to my bookie, use that promo code SGP for a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Play when you get paid. Mybookie.ag. Mm. SGP. We're back here giving out our a DFS lineups. Pina, kick things off. A lot of options here, I feel like, mm. uh, for the quarterback position. Drew Brees really uh, boned me last week. I had a uh, pretty solid lineup otherwise, but Drew Did Brees. Did he not look old as shit? He looked like he fell off the cliff. Him and him and uh, Phil Rivers, tough times uh, reminds for me old QBs. A, reminds me a bit of the uh, the Peyton, and, Peyton Manning experience that last season. There was a bit of a noodle arm there. We'll see if that continues. Uh, Pina, what are you doing for your quarterback this week? Man, like you said, a lot of options, right? You can go with two Brees in a great matchup. I mean, we already saw what Jimmy Garoppolo is capable of doing to Arizona at home. We could be boring and go Jameis Winston in a great matchup, as we you know tend to do on this show. And I went back and forth between those three, and truthfully, I don't think you can go wrong. Um, but based on price, guys, I, I hate to do this, but it's it's too easy. It's a video game type of numbers and scenario for a guy like Jameis Winston, who is, you know, just to save the most money, because I think those three are largely grouped together. And when you look at, you know, up and down at the prices at Breeze at 6,900, um, Garoppolo 67, you're just saving the most money uh, with Winston as we have done time and time again. He is the ultimate streamer, yet he's not really a streamer. He's a QB one, right? So it's a great matchup, um, you know, for them being at home with this Saints team. Um, that has shown time and time again that they are, you know, the defense is not where, you know, people thought it would be after taking a little bit of a step up. They've regressed in a bunch of areas, especially covering that tight end position, which they were so good at. Uh, but any one of those is great. I'm just going 6,500 because it's the cheapest option yet again with Jameis Winston. It is ridiculous because you look at his numbers and granted, I would throw this out. He, he did have one of his fewest attempt games came against the Saints, but At this point, it's hard to not get him in the lineup every week. Now, I did not, Sean. Mm. I did not get him in the lineup this week. And I'll tell you why. I want to support guys named Ryan in the NFL. (laughs) And And I scroll down this list, and what do I see? I see a guy named Ryan coming off a game where they just got taken to the woodshed. He didn't look horrible. Ryan Finley. Mm. They now take to the road against the Oakland Raiders, who are one of the what the fuck most prolific teams in giving up points to quarterbacks. I'm gonna go way contrarian here. Maybe I completely fall off the cliff. Five thousand dollars. Ryan Finley against an Oakland team that just week in week out gives up points to the opposing quarterback. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I Is mean- it? Uh, Ryan Finley on the road. Yeah, I think that's a bit crazy. I, I, I thought it was a better play than Carson Wentz against the Patriots. Oh, Should I Ryan, switch to Carson you? Wentz? Yeah. I mean, if yeah, I mean, look what happened the last time the Eagles had a week to prepare against New England Patriots put up 41 points. Uh, Doug P clearly in uh, Belichick's head. 
I didn't go Carson Wentz. I went to that Cincinnati Oakland game, but give me Derek Carr. Mm. Derek Carr. I mean, you saw what Cincinnati let up. Now you're getting Derek Carr at home after that mini buy. Um, Sixty one hundred dollars. Yes, please. Give me some uh, Derek Carr. And you saw that connection. Spoiler alert for what I might do as far as my stack here. But you saw that QB tight end connection with Lamar Jackson against the Bengals yep. in Cincinnati. I think uh, a similar matchup could uh, favor the Raiders, who Waller is, you know, kind of like their number one there, especially with uh, Tyrell Williams in and out of the lineup. Pina, what are you doing uh, for your first running back? Again, I'm playing all the greatest hits on this lineup here, but if we just, you know, look back at what Cincinnati, as you just talked about, man, what they just gave up and they are the by far the worst team in the league right now. And yes, I fell into that trap of the book's biggest liability was Baltimore and I had Cincinnati and I will never make that mistake again <laughs> at that running back spot. Man, I talk about him every week and he's seemingly still so under the radar about to go over a thousand yards rushing. Um about 190 away from that mark this season is Josh Jacobs on that Oakland team, man. And and as he evolves this game, you know, his game, I absolutely love what he's doing in the receiving department, you know, um, against the chargers, five targets. That is huge in a PPR format. He is auto double digits all year with games, you know, upwards of 27 points, 20, 19, 32. Um, and at, you know, the price point, yeah, kind of it's being, um, caught up to, but I think it's, it's still so valuable in a game where Cincinnati wants no part of playing football. They look like, um, UMass's defense against, you know, teams running triple options against them. They just don't want that smoke, man. 6,900 Josh Jacobs at home. Sean, if you could, I saved a lot of money at the quarterback position. Yep. Swipe over Get up. Oh, here it is. Oh, um, you're killing me, Sean. Oh, that's Sorry. not it. That's not it. There you go, Ryan. Why why are we not back? Why are we not making room for Christian McCaffrey every week? Guess who they have? The Falcons. Yeah. Coming the, off a win. The, the Falcons coming off a win, coming <laughs> off a massive game for them. Uh it, it tells me right here Christian McCaffrey has averaged thirty two point three games. Again, his floor is thirty. Take the man. I don't care what you gotta spend. Take the man. Ten thousand five hundred Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough not to have him in a lineup. I didn't figure out a way to get him in. I went to another uh, high price running back, or certainly not cheap, seventy four hundred dollars. Give me Alvin Kamara. I think this uh, could be a big game for Alvin Kamara. They kind of eased him back into the game last week. Uh, he had ten targets, eight catches, which is huge. He only r rushed the ball four times, but. We've seen Drew Brees. Something might not be right with his either his hand or whatever. Him throwing the ball downfield uh, could be an issue. And Alvin Kamara, perfect opportunity against his very porous Bucks defense. He's only seventy four hundred dollars. I think he's going to catch a ton of balls. I think their plan is to involve him more in the offense, and uh, he'll be one week. You know, whatever was bothering him before, maybe an extra week. He's a little bit healthier. So uh, yeah, I like Alvin Kamara this week against that Tampa Bay defense, which is really. I mean, they've looked bad against everyone, so I, I think you got to have some Saints in your lineup this week. They they have done well again. I mean, they did kind of shut him down earlier in the year, but I agree, and I I think also Kamara is a nice contrarian play because I I do think that less people will be on him for that reason. Yeah, I don't see people loading up on Kamara. Pina, who's your uh, second running back? Man, we're recording this early, so you're gonna have to watch the injury report. But I get so happy when I see guys that I loved watching play in college finally get their opportunity. Man, Brian Hill was one of the most explosive players in college football at the University of Wyoming. This is, you know, kind of the Donnell Pumphrey type of guy. Uh, there was some other ones in there, but he finally got his opportunity. Um, and at 4,800, man, if this continues again, you got to watch this. I mean, you may have to pivot. Uh, but Brian Hill can be electric with the ball in his hands. If Fred doesn't or didn't, you know, wasn't familiar with him at Wyoming. He was an absolute monster. I believe he has, he owns a bunch of records that either him or Pumphrey uh, split. And so, you know, 61 yards on 20 carries. Eh, all right. He also had two catches. The, the touchdown certainly helped his game um, in his day, but he gets a, a pretty good matchup against Carolina that is allowing a lot of yards uh, through the air to running backs as well as on the ground. So it's a really good spot for him. Again, you got to watch that injury report. Obviously, you need to pivot away. But if you can get that sneaky $4,800 RB1 workhorse in there, you got to do it. So I love Brian Hill at 4800 Yeah, I mean, Pina and I are lockstep with this. I'm always going to – and and fortunately for me, I think Brian Hill, what this is allowing me to do is not put Balaj in my lineup 
because he's another guy. <laughs> Workload through the roof. Efficient, Volume, efficiency just do is just down. Uh, Atlanta, I do think – it's not super concerning that he wasn't all that efficient against the Saints defense that has been all right against the run, has been has been pretty staunch up front. Now they're taking on a Carolina team that what did we see Aaron Jones do repeatedly last week? Kind of pound it through <laughs> different different Jones, but the song remains. And like Pina said, if you can if you can get a workhorse for forty eight hundred, it's Again, check the injury reports, like Pina's saying, but I will it's never good when they say that the foot sprain is concerning. Right. So and and later on, when we touch on this, I think Brian Hill also has to be a priority pickup for season long. Forty eight hundred Brian Hill. Yeah, definitely a guy you want to uh, throw in the waiver wire for sure. I'm going to go to that New England Philly game. Give me Jordan Howard. He's forty seven hundred dollars. And you've seen the uh, when the Eagles have had their best games offensively. It's when they really, uh, you know, turn to the run, establish the run with Jordan Howard, getting Miles Sanders going, maybe a little bit in the passing game, a little bit in the running game. You saw the game plan they had to go in and beat Green Bay. I think it's going to be a similar game plan uh, to beat this Pats team. The Patriots team kind of got pushed around against the Ravens, and I think Mm. that's the Eagles' best shot against New England at home. But Jordan Howard, seven touchdowns this season. Uh, You know, the guy's having a good, good career or good season. Averaging, what is he putting up per, yeah, 4.4 yards per carry, seven touchdowns, had a couple catches, nothing crazy, but I think he's going to get, I I wouldn't be surprised if he got 20 carries. He's getting all the goal line stuff. So uh, give me Jordan Howard at 4,700. Pino, who's your second running back? No, we're on to wide receiver, right? Oh yeah. yeah, Sorry. Sean's not paying attention. No, I was was looking at my second receiver. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) It's a savvy veteran Uh, move. Yeah, man. Oh, I see what you did there. Look at you go. Little, little, little double play there. What are you? What are you doing at receiver? Um, too easy, guys. You got to stack Winston. You do it with Edwin's or Evans, or you do it with Godwin. I'm going with Evans here. Uh, look, six targets. I mean, 82 yards on four receptions. You know, the week before that, 12 on 16. It's Mike Evans stacking with Jameis Winston. How much do I really get to pimp this in a, a situation against the Saints defense uh, while Tampa's at home? So uh, it's it's pretty easy. Um, and they're both averaging. There's fun little fact: 22.1 per, uh, fantasy points per game. Mirror images of each other. I like that. So 7,400 Evans. Again, it does feel feel silly to not get a Tampa Bay receiver in your lineup. Unfortunately, Sean, yeah, I've been spending a bit. Mm. So for me, I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna start right up front with my stack. Tyler Boyd, the new quarterback, comes in, <laughs> still sees eight targets, yeah. six catches for 62. Again, a better matchup this week on the horizon. AJ Green still out with a serious case of does not want to play for the fucking bangles <laughs> uh, i you could you could go the route of tate here and save a couple bucks but i'm gonna go with boyd i saw some chemistry there i think they're only gonna grow on that so give me tyler boyd 5200 yeah i uh i also uh on the same page with peanut give me mike evans for 7400 a couple things to note he's coming off a, i think one of his lower games of the season only four catches 82 yards which is a really down game for Mike Evans. And that I think was a big part of it was Patrick Peterson shadowing him uh, for the entire game. Now Marshawn uh, Lattimore is out for the Saints. So I think that's huge because I don't think anyone on this uh, Saints team can cover him. Maybe they try and double him, but uh, Jameis Winston is just going to get this guy the ball. So $7,400 against a backup cornerback or at least not a legit number one like Lattimore. Huge opportunity here for Mike Evans. Pino, what's your second receiver? Man, again, I do want to see what's going to happen uh, in this uh, game that's upcoming, yet to be played on Monday. But you talk about a new weapon in a new offense and a guy just finally kind of breaking free at the forgotten about kind of person in this league, man. Let's talk about Emmanuel Sanders linking up with my oh, boy man. Jimmy G. 7,200 in an absolutely great spot against this Arizona team that has no interest in playing defense aside from rushing the quarterback. And if they don't get there, they just play flag football out there. I know he's coming off a big game at that 27 in his debut spot with them. Uh, so I do want to see what happens. And even if he has a bad game, I, I'll probably like it even more. Uh, but he is quickly coming, you know, coming into his own, becoming 
I can't believe how quickly he got into this offense and into this role with Jimmy G. He's exactly what they needed, um, and they didn't really have to give up much or, or anything for it. At home against Arizona's defense is a spot that I love. I talked about the Jimmy. You know, you could play Jimmy G. I just saved a little money, but I, I this 7200. Yeah, the market caught up quick, uh, but I absolutely love him in this offense, doing what he used to do for so long with Denver. So 7200 for Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, and if you uh, head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com, and uh, this will drop before Monday Night Football, Sean, so if the game hasn't started yet, all over Emmanuel Sanders over five catches tonight uh, for those same reasons. I, I didn't have that. Again, I don't have that kind of money to spend on receivers when you're packing your garage filled with Escalade, Sean. But what I saw, I saw Demarius Thomas character who got mm. nine targets. Six of them catches. I really wanted to go the Jamison Crowder revenge spot here against the Redskins, but for thirty nine hundred dollars, why not go Demarius Thomas in a matchup where there's going to be opportunity? So Demarius Thomas thirty nine hundred. I don't think the Redskins uh, past secondary woke up and figured out how to play defense over the bye week. No. So and for thirty nine hundred for nine targets, I don't know if you can find better value. And worth noting that uh, Haskins has been named the starter and now he's going to be the starter for the rest of the season. So this guy likes turning the ball over, not <laughs> afraid to turn the ball over. So there could be opportunity as far as the jets, you know, getting a turnover deep in Washington or just, you know, being able to capitalize on a guy who's willing to turn the ball over. I'm with Pina here. I it lockstep with Pina. Give me a man. Wow. Sanders. Wow. Uh, Granted, they have a short week, but they're at home against that Arizona secondary. That's just not good at times and, and really bad. Uh, who knows if Kittle will be back by then? Uh, he's dealing with an injury as well. So with Kittle out, I think the Emmanuel Sanders targets go up even more. We'll see how he, he does against uh, Seattle tonight. But either way, it's 7,200. I, I'd like me some Emmanuel Sanders. Who's your third receiver, Pina? Man. This leaky Minnesota back end secondary, where else would I go than my boy? I've been beating my chest for so long, and I'm so happy to see him finally break out. Yeah, I know he has a shitty quarterback. I know it's a no-name. Cortland Sutton, man, absolutely on him forever. What have I always said? He runs like Josh Gordon, but he's built like Justin Blackman, right? Man, this kid is unreal in a great matchup. Uh, if he had a quarterback, I mean, you saw what he would do with just uh, Joe Flacco. Imagine if he actually had somebody that could play the position. Can we get Elway out of the out of the office and, and come throw him some passes, please, against this Minnesota team at 6K? Love it. Uh, you mentioned uh, Josh Gordon and, and Blackman. Uh, does he also – does he toke like those guys? Because that's <laughs> – I, I found it I, – I love how you keep comparing him to Blackman, who's just a hilarious failure of what happened – what happens to weed in the Physical specimen. Though. No, no, I, I hear you. It just makes me laugh. Um for my third receiver, Sean, I'm, uh, I'm I'm dusting off a white guy, a rare oh, white wow. guy wide receiver. He clearly oh is he clearly is the guy that Josh Allen tr trusts the most, and that's Cole Beasley. Cool. Again, uh, low price, high targets. He got he's coming off a four catch, seventy four yard game on six targets. They're now going to where Miami. Mm. Um, he certainly won't be the guy that gets shut down in this game. I like Josh Gordon. He's going to get a good night's rest, too. You know, Cole Beasley's a guy. You don't have to worry about him. There's not going to be any Cole Beasley well, bed check. If you click on his DraftKings <laughs> picture, he looks like he's stoned as shit. But, but, does Miami, have long hair. Miami that is, that could be trouble. Miami is not a weed city, if you know what I mean. No. So, Cole Be Beasley, 4,700. Okay. Interesting uh, spot there. We haven't talked about the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars at all, but give me. Mm. Give me DJ it. Chark Jr., $6,200. Jacksonville coming off the bye. Big Dick Nick back in the lineup going up against this Colts defense, which has had, uh, I don't know, they're very interesting, especially if Hoyer starts again. I, I think they're going to be in trouble uh, as far as, again, the, the turnovers I think will put their defense in a bad spot. And what I really like is Nick Foles back into the lineup if you remember the last throw he had before or the throw he had that he broke his collarbone on was a 35 yard touchdown pass yep. to DJ Chark. They had a lot of chemistry in the preseason Foles is back and you could do, you could definitely do worse than a Foles Chark stack. I think this week Foles is only 5,600. So uh, yeah, give me, give me DJ Chark at 6,200. I, my third I almost went that route instead of the Ryan Finley, Tyler Boyd experiment. Okay. I like that though. Yeah. I mean, He's gonna feels like he's gonna show up. No, oh, before we hear 
about penis tight end. We're going to talk about ace per head. That's right. Monday, you got to maybe you have to settle up with your bookie. You ever think like, hey, what if I was on the other side of the equation? What if I was the guy that was owning and operating my own sports book? Well, Ace Per Head, they're here to help you uh, start your own sports book. That's right. A turnkey solution to an online sports betting empire. That's right. All you got to do is sign up at aceperhead.com slash SGP and they'll get you set up. They got top-notch customer support, some of the sharpest lines in the business. What else do they got? Oh, you want wagers graded immediately? They got you covered. You want a professional betting site? With mobile wagering, in-game wagering, they got that as well. All you got to do is head over to aceperhead.com slash SGP. If you sign up now, they got a deal where they're offering up to six weeks free. That's right, six weeks of their world-class sportsbook management software completely free. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Hey, give it a shot. Sign up. Try it out. See if it's a uh, good fit for you. I have a feeling it will be because they are the leader in paperhead providers. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Pina, tight ends. Let's talk about them. And I want him to go Kittle. I think he's going to you know, be sitting out this week at a week of rest. And, of course, that's that Arizona matchup. That is foolproof. Even Kramer's boy, O.J. Howard, getting involved last week in a good call. <laughs> Uh, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't fit him in there. Um, again, I think that that's a great stack in a different lineup to go uh, Jimmy G and Kittle if he is back there. But at 7K, man, you are paying for it. I went to the next best option, man, and that's that Tampa matchup uh, time and time again. And guess who we get there? Jared Cook coming off a 10-target performance against Atlanta, who, again, historically uh, kind of really struggles there. So you're saving a ton of money at that 4400 point uh, price point in a, you know, basically the best two, three matchups on the board for a tight end. Love this spot, Jared Cook at forty four hundred. So, Jared, I, I'll, I'll caveat this with: if I, I saved a thousand dollars in this lineup, because if I have to pivot away from this guy, Jared Cook is the pivot away. As Tampa Bay is slowly catching Arizona for being dreadful against the tight end, yeah, and the number two team to target in this scenario. But what I did was, I got a so in my prep for the Monday night game, I think there's more doubt around George Kittle then people are letting on. And I think this whole nonsense that he might play Monday night's bullshit, I think he might be out another week. No, he's definitely not playing tonight. Unfortunately, I couldn't find props for this guy. But next week, assuming Kittle is still out, because I think there's a strong chance of that, Ross Dwelly, he is the backup. He had a four-target, four-catch game against the the Cardinals uh, the last time he was on the field. And I gotta, I gotta be honest. I'm just fading this matchup. That's it. I saved a thousand dollars. Like I said, the pivot is the Jared Cook. Maybe I find ways to get Kittle in there if, if, if that's what needs to happen. But they also activated Garrick Sellett for tonight. Yeah. And, so that's and a sign Kittle's not playing. Also a sign to me that he's gonna, he's potentially a little bit more banged up than we think. Yeah. So I'm going with the Ross Dwelly play uh, with the opportunity to pivot up to Jared Cook if needed like it yeah now uh I I kind of alluded to it earlier but uh yeah give me the kid out of Oakland give me Darren Waller I think he's a great uh I mean he seems to be kind of the leader uh for that Oakland pass offense and as well as like a good matchup against the Bengals I compare it similarly to the Ravens where they like to use the tight end a lot with Lamar Jackson if you look at the two games the Bengals had against the Ravens combined 21 catches and uh, 272 yards they allowed in those two games. Now they've had other games where they've been a little better against the tight end, but I think Waller in the same way as uh, Andrews and some of the Ravens tight ends is kind of like the, you know, one of the leaders in targets, catches receptions for Oakland. So I think he is a big game and at 5,500, I, I think that's a great price point. So yeah, give me Darren Waller for the tight end spot. Quick question, Sean. Yeah. Why can't the NFL figure out a way to make a schedule where teams aren't playing each other twice in three weeks? They somehow like that too, especially like late in the season. It's they odd. like, uh, they it's the like... divisional matchups. They got a crowbar them in or something. It's very yeah. odd. It's like their algorithm doesn't know how to make a schedule a hundred years later. <laughs> Pina, what are you doing uh, for the flex spot? 
man, how you know how many times have we talked about they we got to kind of try to attack this Philly secondary and and who do we do that with off a of bye off a of down week you know in this offense I would love to do it with Edelman you're not going to get it how about Philip Dorsett uh, at a great price point at 4200 um, I know it's a road team but look um, we've done it time and time again with this Philly team right and uh, until they prove that they can really get it right. Um, uh, the cheapest option for this is, is absolutely touchdown plus upside. Um, you know, the targets, they've been, it's really been weird for a guy like Dorsett, right? Because he was, you know, so involved early. Uh, Gordon comes back, Gordon leaves. He's been kind of all over, but now you get this, you know, kind of everyone knows their role. Dorsett steps back into his role. Um, and while the numbers don't look good, I, I think you're going to see a, a really strong second, you know, kind of second half of the year for this, uh, for this offense and for Dorsett as a whole. I mean, Lord knows until Gronkowski uh, comes back for playoffs and he takes another back seat. But Dorsett at 4,200, absolutely love the situation for him. Gronk is too busy hanging out with high school football teams that are undefeated. <laughs> He's already jumped ship. I watched the Fox pregame. He was hanging out with the Culver City squad because they're still undefeated. And, and Gronk doesn't like losers. Um I almost put Mohamed Sanu in there. I mean, again, he's coming off a 14 target game, but it does seem like there is opportunity for Brady if he doesn't look like complete dog shit to shred this this Eagle secondary. Sean, yes, for my flex spot, I and told I, you I, I would be a little careful about mm. loading up against the Eagle secondary because I'm not once, saying loading up. I'm no, just no, saying no, but target I, it. But they're to the Eagles secondary credit, like, uh, you know, they were getting roasted when they had guys like Sidney Jones in who's now a healthy scratch. Now that they got, you know, Darby back, who's healthy mills, who's back is healthy. Uh, Avanti Maddox, they were missing their top three cornerbacks. They're all back healthy. So that does, while I don't think they're like a top 15 defensive secondary, I think they are way better than the dog shit. They were trotting out earlier in the season. Okay. Well, worth noting. Some shit is better than others. I guess, Sean, <laughs> For my flex, if you could, I, I again, uh, we're rearranging fucking deck slot, chairs here. A slot. But I, I needed to fit another Escalade in my garage. And this Ryan, is in the flex spot. Are in you the flex to do spot. That? Well, I failed. I want. I got Brian Hill in the regular spot, thinking I would get him out. Penis still stole my thunder. So what am I going to do? I'm going to play the ultimate regression spot. Zeke Elliott coming off a horrible Monday night game. Oh my god. That is a disgusting act. Now going to Detroit against a gloriously bad run defense that somehow showed up last week. Against the backup quarterback, game script should dictate Dallas taking a lead here and holding it. Zeke still had 20 carries last week. He was just not very efficient. $9,000 Zeke Elliott in the flex spot. Okay. For my flex, I went to former... Philadelphia Eagle and now current Philadelphia Eagle. Oh boy. They brought him back out of nowhere. Jordan Matthews. He's only $3,500. And again, this is a, uh, this is kind of a millionaire maker type play. Uh, high ceiling. <laughs> yeah. You insane against this Patriots back end. No, I'm not because I think they're going to, uh, they just signed Jordan Matthews cause their other receivers can't do shit. Um, Alshon Jeffrey is banged up and at $3,500 Jordan Matthews, the savior of the Philadelphia of receiving core please. I want that on record. No, no, no. I'm just saying they've gotten nothing out of their other receivers. He is going to get the targets because him and Wentz have a relationship. He has <laughs> a ton of chemistry with Carson Wentz. Zach Berman of the athletic is reporting mm. that he will have an immediate role in the offense. So you're getting a guy for $3,500 who's I think could get five, six targets and uh, look out. Jordan Matthews, thirty five hundred. And, and real quick on that note of guys who are pretty cheap who are going to get opportunities, uh, I want to hear a little bit more of, of the, the the coach speak this week. But Darius Geis, he is active. I know it's a running back for the Redskins. Good, again, he's another potential workload guy that is sitting there below five thousand. Interesting play for sure. Uh, Peanut, close things out. What are you doing with your defense this week? Man, only twenty six hundred to spend, and pricing wise, I mean, Tampa at twenty six, Falcons, no thank you. You go up and down below that, man. And what do I land on? Somehow, look, say what we want about this. You know how bad this Miami team is, and they are uh, very bad. But look, this Buffalo team is an under machine. The offense, it, you know, divisional matchup, they're always low scoring. Um, you know, on every which way. And look, 
Josh Allen, yeah, he's probably going to have a have himself a decent game. Uh, but at 2,500, man, you're getting, you know, at least a familiar opponent. You're getting uh, Miami at home in the humidity from a, from Buffalo, which I think is is really the biggest key. And look, this Miami defense, you know, quietly, man, 11 points last week, eight the one before that in that jet spot which is really, uh, you know, exactly what you're looking for. I know they played Buffalo before. They were $1,500 at the time and, and gave, you know, only had one. But look, I'm not above fading Josh Allen in Miami heat when he's coming from Wyoming, uh, heading to Miami. Really bad spot for him. Uh, so give me Miami at 2,500. I agree with this spot. This is the other half of my pivot, right? So if I have to pivot up to Jared Cook, I have to pivot down to the Miami Dolphins. But until that happens, Sean, mm. I saw Brandon Allen for this Denver Broncos team look like a competent pro in a home start, first start. Now where does he go? Goes to the spaceship against the Vikings defense that we know is solid. And I know Pina played Cortland Sutton in his lineup, but fuck you if you, if you think that Brandon Allen is going to look like a look like fucking John Elway in the spaceship. You know how much I like this Vikings defense in the spaceship. Give me the Minnesota Vikings for 3400 again. Wow. If I need to pivot to Jared Cook in the tight end spot over oh Dwelly, my God. I'm going to pivot down to Miami because for all of the reasons Pina said, Josh Allen will give you some turnovers. There is heat down there. Josh Allen is not familiar with heat. He's a white guy from the from the north, right? Uh so and the Bills suck, really. Most overrated team in football, right? Uh, I mean, it's six and three. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's Cleveland. Uh, yeah, well, Cleveland overrated still. I don't. I don't know. It's it's hard to say who's like overrated at this point because everyone. I don't think anyone's saying the Bills are amazing. So they just lost to Cleveland, right? Yeah, they lost I know. I, I it was a push, and I called that out as a bad spot. But anyway, pivot down to Dolphins if needed. But let's go with the Vikings. I completely punted on defense. I got. Uh, I was going on a spending spree on all the other player positions, but I ended up with the two thousand dollars. So it was between the Lions and the Arizona Cardinals on defense. I had to go Lions. Uh-huh. They're at home. They're playing the uh, the Dallas Cowboys, who got exposed on Sunday night television for being horrible. Uh, no, this is pretty I'm, embarrassing to lose, lose to Kirk Cousins in in prime time. <laughs> pretty embarrassing. They they found it. The Jason Garrett coming off a Monday night a win uh, was uh, a strong trend. I threw that out there. You well. Like that? I do, Kirk. I did like cashing that sweet money line. <laughs> One less day to prepare is tough when you have all those shoes to shine. <laughs> yeah, I there's nothing I really I can't make a great case about Detroit. Uh, they're at home. Patricia should get them up for this game. But uh, other than that, I got nothing. Oh, wow. All right. Eighteen hundred dollars. You could do. Uh, I don't know if you could do worse, but I, I'll predict this. They won't be the worst scoring defense. Hmm. Wow, that's, that's bold. At eighteen hundred dollars, again, I, I've just been kind of punting defenses because it seems like you have to either play one at like three thousand to four thousand to get anything out of it, or just completely say fuck it. So it's kind of my picks. Before we go, waiver wire. What are you guys thinking? Besides Daniel Jones, <laughs> four touchdowns, baby. Is he still available? Uh, according to the numbers I'm looking at, he's available in more than half of leagues. So again. I, What's I up guess. with Saquon, man? Tell me about it. It's in a great spot. Did nothing. Uh, so, yeah. I'm genuinely curious on your take. I, I don't know. I didn't watch. I didn't. I, the audio wasn't. The, I basically turned that game off. I mean, we had it on, but the, the game, the uh, game audio was off after about, what, four drives? Can't handle this anymore. <laughs> Coaching sucks, clearly. When I, I, I told this to Sean uh, this past Sunday as we were watching games, but when I heard the reporter ask Shermer, how he copes with all of this losing and he says i was built for this shit <laughs> fire the man that doesn't play well get in him the, out of uh, here in the new york media get him out of here as far as waiver wire guys uh gerald everett mm. he's, a, he's a fun pickup he's I don't, been crushing I, it. I don't know what happened to cooper cup uh, i started him just guy did nothing mcveigh has been saying forever that gerald Ever- everett is going to be his jordan reed and and he kind I mean he kind of looks the part. It's just strange how it, like over the course of the season how they're getting him more and more involved. We talked about him uh, last week. I think I had him in my DraftKings lineup that I gave out on air. James Washington, receiver for the Steelers, he seems to be getting involved uh, more. Darius Slayton. Oh my God, Ryan! I don't know why you didn't alert us to uh, Darius Slayton, but if he's available, he's a, he seems like he has got some because uh, he just doesn't Jones look that chemistry. Good. 
a lots of Jones chemistry. He just does. I mean, what? 10, 10 catches, that's two touchdowns. Yeah. Crazy. Kareem hunt, Kareem hunt, yeah. seven catches. Sean. Yeah. That's interesting. Seven I, I was surprised he was involved in the passing game. Pina, you got anything? To Brian Hill's big one too. Yeah. Br Brian. Yeah. Hill. Brian Hill. I mean, he's, Oh, and then your guy, Sean, James Washington. Yeah. Co college rapport with the quarterback. He I coming just, off a I six. just said that one. I, I'm just saying I, I'm giving you credit. Oh, okay. That's a good, that's definitely something I co-sign. And then if you're into white guys nice. yeah, playing the, playing the, uh, the, the wide receiver position, it's clear that Hunter Renfro is going to be, is, is more and more involved in this offense uh, going forward. He had a bad game last week, only four catches, but I, I do like his prospects going forward. Uh, and then uh, I guess if you can't chase touchdowns, Sean, but Kyle Rudolph <laughs> had a hell of a game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would lean more towards Everett if you need a guy. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I don't see Rudolph. Last... Yeah. Sorry. What were you saying? Peter? I just, I don't see Rudolph doing that again. No, probably not. It feels but a bit touchdown dependent. It seems like he's more involved than he was earlier in the season. For sure. What were you saying? Pina? Uh, going to your team and your guys, man. Uh, after three game, uh, three games off. Look, Darren Sproles is, you know, active. Is there? I know Jordan Howard has, you know, come up to be the guy. Uh, but you know, if anything should happen or you you have that, I think that Sproles is, you know, Mr. Reliable. You still could get, you know, him bringing a punt back or anything like that. So you could do worse if you need one. And Geis was the other one I wanted to touch on, as Ryan said as well. Well, again, and I would say if you're looking for a deep flex play, I would, I would slot Jordan Matthews above Darren Sproles as far as the slot. No, I thought, I'm saying I think that, that Howard is going to be the one like he is the guy but I'm saying should anything happen I think that they always know that they can at least you know count on Sproles or, or anything like that if you do have Howard yeah Doug P does seem to like Sproles way more than he should it's Marius Thomas too I don't know how I missed him but got him in the UFS lineup nine targets solid, he's available solid pickup for sure all right guys thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast Make sure you rate, review, and share on iTunes. Again, the podcast. We're heading up to Pullman, Washington. So if you're in the Wazoo area this weekend, hit us up at Gambling Podcast. Looking for places to hang, uh, maybe do some tailgating and whatnot. I feel like if you're in the Wazoo area this weekend, it's because you live in the Wazoo area. Well, you turns could, out it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's in the middle of we're nowhere. Ba we're in Idaho. We're yeah, basically we're going to Idaho. Airbnb in Idaho. So again, if you're. If you're a Wazoo alum that's coming back for the game, you're going to be tailgating, drinking, whatever. Hit us up uh, at Gambling Podcast or podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Pina, uh, what can people expect on Inside Vegas? Yeah, man, look, people think it's easy out here in this business. I, I think you guys know more than any. It's, it's sometimes you get to wait on other other programs and other things. The feed just took a little bit longer. We are coming at you live officially this week. Myself and James Alberino, a.k.a. Spread Investor on Twitter. Debut episode of Inside Vegas on the new feed is coming up. So excited for it and uh, sorry for the delay for everyone. It was just waiting on um, Apple's feed and a couple of things that – you know, great things take time, as they say. So we are coming at you live this week and couldn't be more excited for it, guys. Yeah, shout out to everyone that uh, distributes podcasts that isn't named Apple for actually <laughs> having modern technology. And, hey, as always, listen to us on Spotify. That mm. helps us out. So uh, even if you don't, um, you know, go in there, like, you know, favorite us or follow us. Whatever. Oh, listen, I'll, I'll tell you flat out. Uh, when I have a problem with our feed on Spotify or sure. getting a new feed on Spotify or anything, I email them and they fix the problem within minutes. Love my people over at Spotify. Apple, on the other hand, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, we're coming. I, we're coming for you, Apple. We're going to take them down a notch when it comes you're, to podcasts. You're turning into Walmart. You basically got yeah. old people as greeters. <laughs> but make sure you rate and review. Give yeah, us some yeah. iTunes <laughs> reviews on Apple Podcasts. That's where Let them know how awesome we are. Exactly. Tell them. Feature us for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. I got nothing for you today, Sean. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride.